James, thanks so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Uh, tell me about your business. Tell me where you guys are located. Uh, give me your website address, Instagram, social media handles, all that good stuff. All right. So uh, I'm James Dunnigan with Party Portraits Photo Booth. Uh, we do photo booths. Um, we've got quite a few different types, but our, our bread and butter is going to be the Magic Mirror Photo Booth. Um, about, say, 50 to 60 percent of our business is in Baton Rouge. That's where I live. Um, and then the rest is pretty much in New Orleans and surrounding areas. What's your um, website? That's going to be uh, partyportraitsphotobooth.com. Nice. And then um, all of our social media handles and everything like that's on the website. Okay. Um, but if you do hashtag or you know, like the little ad symbol, party portraits will pop right up. All right, cool. Right on. Um, what was the inspiration for getting started in the photo booth part of this business? So in college, uh, I was a DJ um, for weddings, and then I got a nice uh, contract on Bourbon Street, um, and that's essentially how I put myself through college. And then I got a nine to five, um, worked really hard, um, basically to in, in digital advertising to uh, make other people money. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd grossed a couple of different accounts to about a million dollars a month. Now. This was for car dealerships, so sure. I mean that's that's like 40 cars. It's really not yeah. you know that incredible, but um, you know I just realized I was making the wrong person money, and um, but I didn't want to go back to Bourbon Street. It just um, every weekend it gets kind of tiring. Yeah, you, know, you can yeah. only just handle so much debauchery. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty crazy down there. I'll just say that. Oh yeah, very much. Um, I met Little Wayne once, and he was way shorter than I thought he would be. Uh, it's just that's my celebrity story there. Um, and then, you know, I didn't want to go back to DJing after the nine to five, but I knew I, I hated the nine to five. Um, it just it really wasn't my style. So I got the harebrained idea to start a photo booth company on the side. And nine, eight, nine months later, I was basically Doing it full leaving time. the nine to five and did it full time. Yeah, cool. So what's different about the mirror photo booth that you're talking about versus something else? Tell well, me about the uh, photo booth stuff, right? What's the what yeah, is the yeah. difference? Yeah. All right, so we've got, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of uh, different styles nowadays. Um, the one that we started off with was kind of like your traditional style. It was more like a tent that you'd walk into, you'd sit down, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it just was, it was just huge. It was really big. Um, and some of the venues that we went to were just a little more intimate. And uh, I mean, I just remember it was a, it was like a Sweet 16 or some kind of party with a bunch of kids. And they just kept knocking the booth. And I mean, they were basically just trashing it. And I was just think, you know, sitting there talking to my business partner at the time. It's like, man, we've, there's got to be something we can do that's like, you know, kind of keeps this from happening. Because yeah. I mean, those, uh, those tents are like $500 a piece, you yeah. know? So it's, and they were just tearing it up. And uh, so we put our heads together. We kind of came up with a, uh, the mirror idea. Um, there was a couple other people that kind of had something similar, but it hadn't fully formed yet on, uh, for anybody. And then we put our spin on it and haven't looked back. Nice, nice. And what does that setup look like versus like the tent thing? So it leans up against, uh, well, it doesn't lean up against the wall, but because it's at an angle, it gives the impression that it's leaning up against the wall like a uh, Victorian style mirror, one of those like full length body mirrors. Gotcha. So okay. you can see yourself from head to toe. All right. So they basically are looking at themselves in the mirror and then being able to and then it's taking photos of them. Right. Doing, well, it's a, so it's interactive. So we've got a touch film on the, on the glass. So it's a special, um, it's like two way mirror glass and we put a touch film on it. Mm -hmm. So you can actually touch it, interact with it, select different options, write your name. You can play games on it as well. Um, and, uh, you can also do social sharing on it. So it, uh, lets people, you know, type in their number and it's a little, it's just, it's cool. Honestly, the coolness factor of it is, is, I mean, that's absolutely key. That's, that's the main selling point. So it's very Instagrammy. <laughs> yep. It looks like uh, a giant iPad, honestly. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Um, now you're going to have to get into like short videos, right? For TikTok, 15 minute, uh, you know, we've been, post. <laughs> we've been doing that. It's, um, yeah. I'm personally, I'm not, I, I, TikTok escapes me, you know, like that, that, you know, that 15 seconds uh, of video. Yeah. I don't know. I, I take longer to say things, I guess. I feel like I think, think of it more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everybody, everyone's asking when the integration and all that kind of stuff's coming in. Um, and we're working on it. You know, that's, uh, we are working on the API. They just, Facebook and some other platforms have just been very, very weird since that 2000, about 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So it's a lot harder to do than, than you might think. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, obviously Facebook changed their API stuff a lot because of, you know, some of the data leaks that happened, but, um, um, yeah, and they're probably, and, and they've always been kind of, I don't know, as a software developer, uh, Facebook to me has always been kind of weird in general about their APIs. They keep changing them all the time. Uh, they have uh, limiting restrictions on certain things that you think would be like, why can't you do that? Um, it just seems strange, but yeah. So you develop, you do uh, development work as well? I do, yeah. Software I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. I, I've had to do it myself. Uh, we try to outsource as much as we can, but sometimes it's just easier for me to jump in there. Yeah. Um, not my favorite thing to do, but yeah, you know. I, yeah, I, it's not my favorite thing to do either. I'm mostly, I like looking at, I mean, I'm a data geek basically. So I like spending time um, asking questions and assimilating responses to answer, answer those questions and, you know, yeah. I work through theories and things like that. So that's the things I like to do. Um, so let's, so what's the process like when someone contacts you, uh, what do they go through? What's the process look like? So, you know, so um, when I was DJing, it was back before, I mean, people still, you know, dropped off checks. They'd still want to come in and meet you, things like yeah. that. So, so we do have an office. Um, we're in it right now. You've got the, my years, well, <laughs> it's not uh, relevant anymore, but this was tw- <laughs> 2019 or 2020 calendar. It, wow. It's completely different now. Um, but so, you know, we had, we had the office and we were meeting with clients, things like that. But um, I guess as the uh, digital age really kind of took over, um, it's really mostly all online now. Yeah. Um, what will end up happening, I guess, start to finish, they'll generally see our product somewhere and inquire about it that way. And that's kind of how they start the funnel. Or they'll just Google us or see, you know, we do a little bit of retargeting ads here or there. Um, but I mean, really the, 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 our bread and butter is going to be the word of mouth yeah, at the event. Sure. That's yeah. going to be where we get most of our, um, uh, most of our clientele. Um, you know, online advertisement is still successful. Um, and then bridal shows, which, you know, really aren't a thing anymore, but, um, that's, I guess, where the other 30%, I guess would come from. Sure. And then, um, so then, you know, they see it, they engage for the first time, some kind of way. Um, that'll typically prompt them either to one of our social media platforms, something like that, uh, which will eventually, at least the idea is to eventually funnel them into the, the main website and then, uh, or they just go to google.com and that's 80% of everybody. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, they basically go to the website, they can check it out. They can, uh, you know, we've got an FAQ on there. Um, we've, I feel like we do something a little bit different. We try to put our FAQ pretty front facing, like pretty yeah, much good. like almost, uh, almost immediately visible just because the first thing people want to know other than pricing, you know, they want to know if it's going to do what they want it to do or yeah. what they think they saw it doing. Mm-hmm. So that's why you put our FAQ up there pretty, you know, on the front front page. And then, you know, they kind of click on it. Um, we don't have too many web pages, um, that, like, you know, supporting information on it, like, uh, like about the prints, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they'll eventually get, uh, hopefully, if they haven't dropped off, right? Um, mm-hmm. Eventually, they'll get down to the actual booking website itself. And then from there, it's all automated. Um, it, we've got our inventory that tracks on there. We've got our availability, 100%. And then, um, let's see, trying to think of exactly the... I mean, there's a whole bunch of like little tripwire, like upsells and things like sure, that. And sure. they're kind of interweaved in there, but... Um, then the main, then they'll basically, they'll, uh, pick up their date, pick up the things that they want, sign the contract, pay the deposit. And then they but have everything's really just kind of portal. online, right? Just like, yep. there's no reason really for them to contact you anymore. It's just like, pick a time, pick what you want. Yep. Boom. Yep. A yep. lot of them. So you've got like the moms that'll be, so I'm not sure how, you, you know, what other people's markets are like, but for our market. The moms are planning the weddings right now. It yeah. is a crazy, uh, it was a, kind of a weird shift about a year and a half ago where all I talked to is mothers. That's it. Don't talk to the dad. Don't talk to the bride. Don't talk to the sister. Not, just moms. Yeah. It's very strange. Um, so a lot of moms want to come, you know, they're used to doing it a little bit more of the older yeah. style way. So I yeah. do still meet with a couple of people here or there. But for the most part, yeah, it's all online, 100%. Yeah, that's cool. Um how long does it take to assemble everything for you guys? I mean, can you do more than one in a weekend? Do you usually oh, yeah. do more than one in a weekend? So you got enough. So we've got um, 
I have nine booths up and running. I have the nice. parts and pieces for, I think, like something like 18, just under right. 20, because I'm counting the cameras as that, you know, as the, yeah. whether I have the booth or not. Um, so I know, yeah, so we typically keep about nine up and running. Um, and yeah, we'll typically we'll get, out. Yeah. yep, it's, um, <laughs> It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, just a lot of work. It's just, yeah. it's just a lot of work. A lot of late nights, you know. Yeah. And, so um, you guys go, so they, I mean, you really don't have anything other than we show up at a certain time, set things up. Do you have someone that has to operate it or be there? We do pay somebody to stand there, essentially. Yeah. If the paper runs out or um, every once in a while the ribbon will just break because it does, you know, yeah. the, the ink, you know, something like that. Or... Um, we have had a couple different people that um, don't know what to do with the photo booth. They just kind of go and stand there. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we do have an attendant there to kind of help them out. Though, I will tell you this, the further away I get from the booth, the smarter people get. It's the craziest thing. Like, all of a sudden, like, if I'm there, they have no idea what to do. If I'm 20 feet away, they... Suddenly, all of a sudden, yeah, they figured yeah. it out. It's the crazy. It's 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 hysterical. Uh, yeah. I've been doing this. Uh, so last year we did, last year we did over four hundred. It was like four sixteen. If depend, and if you count charity events, it's even more. But I only sure. count paid gigs. So I've been doing this a while. So I'm a little cynical, just a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's just um, because it, it's it's the idea. You know, if we spend a lot of time trying to simplify the process as much as we can, sure. uh, and try to make it as user friendly as we can. And um, since I'm the, one of the ones who's asking the question, trying to do very similar to yourself, trying to figure out, okay, what can we do? How can we do this? You know, make yeah. it easier on them. At some point, I'm just like throwing my hands up, like, it's just not anymore wait, you can do. Yeah. I know, right? It's like, I can't make you read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, that's cool. Uh, so, uh, I mean, and, and they're, they're all, I mean, you got to have someone there the whole time. Um, we don't have to. But I like to. Uh, yeah. I, I like to make sure just in case. You never know. Um, I, yeah. yeah, I did have, um, we've only had one real major incident. Well, two, I guess. But one of them, the, the technician, I guess, kind of provoked. But um, we did have one guy get really, um, I mean, he was three sheets to the wind. Like, I, he was very much drunk. And uh, he threw a chair at the, the booth, uh, at the mirror, right? And wow. um, it it cracked like a little corner of it. It didn't shatter or anything like that. But that was like, every time I think about like, okay, I think we can handle this event without an attendant. I like close my eyes and I just, I see that chair. See in the that chair. Soaring, and it's just like, nope, we want somebody there just in case. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And so what is a, I mean, what does a day look like for you and an attendant? Like the whole day or just a short um, time within So the for me, so for me, um, so you can, I mean, it, it is definitely something that can be done in like 20 minutes. You know, we're basically, uh, you know, basically from the time you get there, just fully set up an operational, mm -hmm. you know, if there's not a whole lot of, um, there's no obstacles in between, you know, your car and where it's supposed yeah. to go. Yeah. 20 minutes, you know, gotcha. I mean, we try to make it real easy. However, for me, I always go the, you know, step above. It takes about, I'd say about an hour, hour and a half. Um, I like to make sure that I introduce myself to everybody, you know, try to get like a lay of the land, figure out, um, you know, the best way to get in, the best way to leave that way, if, you know, because um, if there's a, typically if there's questions, I'm the go-to. Yeah. So I need to know the, the, you know, the venue, like the back of my hand as best I can in case I have to answer questions in the future. Yeah. Um, and that's the most challenging part there is, um, you know, it's like I was there three weeks ago. Like if they didn't have stairs, it's like, well, they got <laughs> stairs now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, you know, so, yeah. uh, you know, and that's, and then, uh, the mirrors are pretty big. I mean, they're about five feet tall, three feet wide. So yeah. they're not really meant for stairs, but we make it work. Yeah. And then, um, so setup wise, yeah, I'll take, I'll take a day to set all the, like basically get all the equipment event ready. Um, just to, you know, to take my time with it, you know, I don't typically try to rush. Um, just haste makes waste type of thing. Sure. Yeah. And how long are you guys there usually? So we've got a couple different options. Uh, 
the first one is going to be for three hours of service and then the four hour ceremony uh, four hours if they include like a ceremony as well because typically the ceremonies uh are be, will be like 30 minutes long yeah but we got to be there ahead of time you sure. know um and then if they want to keep going we always tell them that uh contract wise we have to charge a little extra but if you want to talk to the tech the night of they can typically work something out with them yeah. uh, and pay the tech in cash and it can be cheaper yeah you know, cool. at that point we've made money the tech will make extra they'll save everyone wins yeah that's cool that's good that's good you guys know that right so um what about um what would you say is um like some advice you would give for people that are looking for a photo booth option for either uh, their wedding or an event what what advice would you so give? so the the best piece of advice I could give couples or people looking is it's not a photography. It's not photography. It's not a photographer. It's not a photography service. It's a photo booth. You know, um, if it, if you're standing too close and it cuts your head off, take a step back. You, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's just, um, you know, it's for fun, you know, it, it, like cutting your, getting your head cut off. So like where you don't see it, I mean, that's part of the, that's part of the experience, you yeah. know, it's, and yeah. uh, people are just way, way, way too serious about the pictures and um, in our package, I'm not sure if everyone does this, but for us, it's a limited prints during the duration of the event, mm -hmm. you know? So there's no reason for them not to be able to take an extra set of pictures if they didn't like the first one, you know? Yeah. Um, that would be, that would be my number one piece of advice there is, is don't, not to take it too seriously. Yeah, just have fun with it then. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, I guess, let's see, the other thing would be uh, book in advance and, um, being small uh, so this hasn't always been an issue but uh here lately um paying on time uh is very important um especially so we went four months well three yeah. and a half i guess uh of basically business. you know with with no business whatsoever yeah now, luckily luckily we try to keep our books you know relatively straight and so we we're able to kind of weather that but i mean if it happens again oh that's gonna be rough but you know, we made it through the first round, you know, pretty unscathed. Most events just decided to reschedule rather than um, cancel completely. But yeah. um, that doesn't leave a whole lot left in the coffers, you yeah. know. So and, uh, you know, we try to we we set all of our remaining balances on a schedule. And when people don't pay uh, like, you know, on time, yeah. um, you know, yeah. that, that takes from something else somewhere else, you know. And, um, you know, we, we've had so like this weekend we had to see here so we had three people that still have remaining balances for today and tomorrow so and they're today and tomorrow today and tomorrow yep wow. so and they still haven't uh you know they still haven't haven't put the remaining balance in now we're gonna still show up you know and make sure that uh we, we provide the service and then you know, i always tell the techs i try not to have the technicians have to handle money you yeah know, it's just an their jobs there to make their job is to make sure it doesn't catch on fire, not to, yeah. not to like collect money, you know. <laughs> right, right. Make sure so, you put the printer paper in, and, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that that'll be that'll be my you know two heavy hitters, and then uh, I mean yeah, the, the have fun thing is that's just that's all the time. You know that's that's, that's constantly is managing the expectations. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, let's switch gears a little bit. Talk about business side of things. Um, outside of uh you know what's happening today what would you say over the past couple of years has been working well for you as a business innovation absolutely uh so we, yeah. we are constantly Good. innovating constantly trying to do the next cool new thing um we've got the, the little 360 booth thing where it'll take a picture like all the way around you things like that um and then we do the handhelds as well those are like kind of our new our new toys i think i've So I 3D printed this. This is my like this is my new little favorite toy. So it's nice. a, just an iPad. It's just an iPad in a, a 3D printed enclosure. I mean it's nothing nice. super special, but the ability to like print those out and just you know yeah, that's that's uh, been a huge. Uh, it's been very successful for us. Now with COVID, we've had to kind of dial it back because you can't pass things around like you used to be able to. Right. But yeah. the innovation side. Uh, whether it's the new cool product or just a new methodology to kind of um, streamline existing processes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good that you do that because a lot of businesses don't really think about how to streamline their processes, right? They just like, I got this idea, I'm doing this thing and it just happens. And, you know, it's working and they never looking at 
the fact that, yeah, it's working now, but what about future, right? What are you doing to streamline the process to make it easier for you, to make it more cost effective for you? Um, you know, like, you know, just, just making it easier for people to operate your booth, right? Or the, the mirror yep. is, is huge, right? Because, you know, I know you're probably at your wits end with, with innovating, like making it as easy <laughs> as possible. But the reality is, is that, you know, you almost have to program these things for, you know, a second or third grade person to be able to operate and, and work them, right? So yep. it has to be yep. simple, it has to be easy, has to be very clear about what, what has to be done. So um, that's good. I mean, keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, we try, we try just, um, you know, there's, and then uh, so a lot of times we get feedback uh, on things that are not necessarily within our control. Those are, that's always something very interesting to try to manage. Mm -hmm. um, why didn't it do this? It's like, well, it's because it, it doesn't. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's it was, what did I get the other day? I got something where, um, and, and being on the developer side, I, I know more of the, I know the real answer, yeah. you know, behind why it doesn't. And you, it's just really hard. To, you can't, I mean, that's a lay person, you know, that's just a person who just doesn't want the print. They want it airdrop to their phone. It's like, why didn't it airdrop to my phone? It's like, well, because, you know, it would take a whole lot of security sort of, you know, certificates that I just don't want to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, cool. So what would you say uh, has been like your biggest challenges over the past couple of years um, outside of COVID, right? But what's been oh, the, the people, challenges? the people, it is people? hard to find good help. Really? Very, very hard to find good help. Yeah. We, uh, you know, we upped our pay. I, uh, you know, there's very, very few jobs out there that are going to pay what we pay for the a night's worth of work. I mean, if you, if you do what I do, it's an eight hour shift, right? Yeah. That's, and that's with a, uh, you know, that's with a four hour event, you know, an hour drive there and back to wherever, plus, yeah. plus a little bit of setup time and prep time, you know, a little bit of prep with a picking up the equipment. So, uh, but still, I mean, I, I feel like we pay pretty, pretty well, you know, for what it is. Because once it's, once you're done, you stand in there. You just, you know, you're like, I don't know anybody that gets paid to just stand there. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it, it is challenging to try and find good help. Um, so then when, when we do, I mean, we do everything we can to keep them. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, a, I mean, that's a challenge for a lot of businesses, right, is to find good help and be able to keep them, um, you know, keep them motivated to stand there and, you know, set the stuff up. Right. I mean, that's right. probably a challenge too, right? It's like, okay, cool. Now what? <laughs> well, so we do, um, so try to keep it interesting. We play little photo booth games. That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. Um, where we try kind of try to mess with people, you know, where they'll go to, they'll go to, to it has like a button on it and it says touch here to start her. Right. So when they go to touch it, which is like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? And they're like, step back, you know, we basically scare them out of their shoes. And then as they look at you like, you know, <laughs> like they about broke it. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, they said, no, I'm joking. It's fine. It's fine. So, you know, we mess with people, try to create the experience, try to make it fun, things like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's cool. Uh, any other challenges that you've had that you think of besides people? Um, no, not really. Yeah, no, obviously, no, the tech's there, right? The tech already exists. It's just a matter of putting the things together to make it work for what you're, what you're wanting, right? Right, right. You know, a lot, I know a lot of people would be, um, they'd probably cite like, I don't know, competition or, um, you know, more leads, more, you know, more of the, more money, I guess, at the end of the day. Um, but I mean, we offer, I feel like where our pricing is competitive, you know, we offer a really good product for, you know, for what they pay. Um, mm -hmm. We offer all the amenities. There's really not a whole lot extra that they could want. There's not a whole lot of negotiation, things like that. So, I mean, we, we book quite a few events uh so that's not necessarily for us that's not necessarily our concern yeah. our concern is more internal trying to make sure yeah. everything stays streamlined trying to make sure the technicians know what to do things like that well you know, surprisingly i mean that's the challenges of most businesses that i interview it's it's not necessarily the external stuff so much it's more the internal things right uh whether right. it's finding time to, to work on your business right instead of in the business whether it's uh yeah you know, trying to figure out various different capacities of working with your employees or whatever those are, it seems to be most of it is, are those challenges. Well, that's a good idea. That's uh, the in the business rather than on the business. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, two kids, they, they take up all my energy when I'm at home. Oh, of course. You know, I come home tired already, you know, <laughs> and then I didn't know I could get even more tired. But. Yeah, no, they'll suck, they'll suck everything out of you, right? I mean, yep. that's the way it is. Um, if you had to go back maybe three to five years ago, what would you go back and tell yourself? So that um, there was a, that, so I have a specific instance that was that made you know business life challenging, um, you know. But that's super specific. Um, if more general advice would be, um, it could be specific. Like if like if what you know today. If so I only knew this today, and I told myself, what would I go back and tell myself? So we we uh, used to process through PayPal, right? And uh, yeah. PayPal offers you um, basically like uh, working capital. Yeah. And the uh, the idea that they sell you on now, I'm familiar with working capital, you know, and I, I know how that works when you do it with like a bank, but if you do it with PayPal, at least our experience, right? Um, what ends up happening is, you know, you take it if you need it, then you pay it back, take it if you need it, pay it back, right? Yeah. And every time that you, you basically pay it back and you basically bring the account to current, they increase it, right? At, at least it's supposed to be scheduled, you know, for, yeah. the, for an increase. And, um, so we were basically growing, growing, growing. We did that, and then they didn't increase it. And we had already bitten off, you know, more than we could chew, thinking <laughs> it was going to be increased, and it didn't. So that would be my advice: is you know, basically don't don't make promises, you know, unless you know for a fact you can keep them. Now, we were trying, you know, from our, we made the best decision we could, you know, yeah. and um, that's kind of our, our our first real experience. I mean, this was probably 2016. Um, first real experience with managing money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that, um, that made it a challenging 2016, but luckily the market was there. So we were able to recover right. relatively well, but, it's good. um, I mean, we could just, you know, always think back, you know, late at night, it's like, man, I wonder yeah. how much further we could be. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, I mean, you know, I, I've heard certain financial people say this all the time in business, right? It's like, don't spend money you don't have in the bank and the cash and the check has been cashed and it's been cleared right yep do you yep. have it don't spend it yep so it's there don't spend it right so uh yeah i mean i've learned that lesson myself personally so yeah <laughs> i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> you know um what's uh what would you say has been your most uh you know, this is the last question really so what is your most inspirational wedding or business story that you have Business-wise, so we we went to, we went from Baton Rouge to the state, kind of with New Orleans. We'd go all the way to Biloxi to Beaumont. Now we don't go, we don't go too much, you know, further north uh, than Alexandria, just because it just doesn't make financial sense. Sure. But I mean, essentially, for you know, we we went from the city to the state, and then we decided to operate on the national level with actually selling booths, um, and that that was that was pretty incredible yeah. um it, it was really interesting to see um i mean i went from a nine to five you know what i mean to yeah. operating at like wedding mba cater source you know we did a couple of different national events and they uh, it, it was it was fantastic it was a wonderful experience and um you know you see everybody around you at least the people that and you can tell you can tell the corporate ones versus like the, the people that actually this is their their business this is their yeah. baby you know yeah, yeah. And um, that, that to me was very inspirational just to see, be surrounded by other people, other like-minded individuals, you know, that are trying, that are hustling, trying to yeah. Yeah. sort of do everything they can as much as they can. That's um, totally, um, that's totally inspirational to see. Um, it's really inspirational to me to see business owners who have taken their passion about what it is they're doing and kind of turned that into a business and been able to like, focus on that and do that a hundred percent and make that successful. Yeah. That's, that's always the exciting thing really is just to kind of see like, like yourself, right? Like to see what you've done went from a nine to five job, taking something you were pretty passionate about, created all this tech, did all this work and then made this thing successful. Here you are, you know, four or five years later, just, you know, killing it outside of this year. But you know, yeah, that's outside anybody's home, control. I was looking at the, uh, I was looking at our, our, uh, our quarterlies and I was just like, Oh my goodness, this, this is so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this would be like 2015 numbers. Yeah. Basically. But I, you know, the, don't, 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 don't kill yourself there, James. Cause it's, everybody's feeling the same pain, right? I mean, it's, 
But you know, that's that's the only that's the real only benefit I can see out of it is everybody's it, 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 you know everyone's on the same playing field. So yeah. the you know the um, the leniencies are there for everyone, and that's. Yeah. So I know Unfortunately, I some are worse than others, right? You know, like yep. the rental side of the business and uh, I would say the catering or staffing part of the business has hurt, been hurt pretty bad. Um, oh, yeah. Some of our guys really rely on the extra cash. You know, yeah, they, they sure. really, they're in a uh, skilled labor job and there's really not a whole lot of movement, you know, yep. and, that's, and that's really all they know what to do. You know, they went to school for two years, three years, whatever. Yep. So they, they, uh, they need the extra money. And that's, yep. um, you know, so we're trying to help them out as best we can, but you know, yeah, got, it's tough. Yeah. yeah there's no tough. events. You can't do anything. Right. I mean, exactly. uh, my nephew, exactly. yeah, my, my nephew plays, uh, he's a musician and, uh, he, he, um, he, they had a pretty popular band called cartel. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, but, um, he was, he's a guitar tech with third eye blind and basically <laughs> they, okay. they, there's no events, right? There's no events until next year. Yeah. So he's out of work too. Right. So right. What are you gonna right. Do? Yeah. So. so the main thing we've been doing is sharpening the saw, trying to all the little projects, all the little things that we basically been putting off. We've been trying to get to those. Yeah. Now, some of those, you know, you open it up and you re didn't realize it was a can of worms. And all of a sudden it's, oh, well, that's, you know, you go down a rabbit hole trying yeah. to solve like this one little issue. Um, but, but we have the time to do that now. Um, it's starting to pick up a little bit, but we're, so we're in Louisiana, so our uh, our numbers shot back up. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen yeah. now? But right. Um, but that's you know, we really took the time to kind of you know try to better ourselves, better you know, better the business, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, a lot of other people did the same because um, I know I know some people, some of our competitors in the market. I guess you know. Um, it's always good to have, you know, uh, yes. you know, as much as we, as much as we hate them, we love them because it keeps us on our toes. Sure. Well. So, yeah. um, plus it gives, you know, they give me great ideas. You know, all the time, so. <laughs> yeah. Smart. So, that's right. Find the missing opportunities, right? What's, what's, yeah. What are you guys not doing? Right. That's, that's really the thing. Exactly. Yeah. So what have you seen in the market overall? Uh, like, any, any, have, well, yeah. What is, so I know you've been doing these interviews. Uh, what yeah. has been your takeaway? Uh, like from the general market perspective of what's happening? Um, I meant really more for you personally, but sure. Uh, well, for me, it's been a great learning experience, number one. Um, just learning about, you know, what people do and how they do it. Um, and then also just um, lear you know, learning about you, right? Like just like, oh, I didn't know this, this kind of stuff even happened, right? Like just interviewing different types of the business like i know what the business is i don't work in the business i kind of sit outside of it but i know what the business is i know how the numbers work. but um just learning about what people do in in their business and how it operates from beginning to end has been pretty exciting and, and a great learning experience also building relationships right like i've met people i would have never probably met before uh, being able to talk to them, talk about their business, talk about business in general. And uh, it's been awesome. I mean, that part of it's been just really the best part of the whole thing. Just kind of learning about you and and getting to know you guys. And, um, you know, that, that thing's been, that's been great. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the idea really here is to uh, share and, and learn. And so... Um, if I can share about what you do with other people and you get business from it, awesome. If I can share about what you do and have other people learn about things that they're struggling with and thought, oh, I should do it like that. Or I haven't ever thought of that, right? And it teaches them something new, then great. I think that's 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 really the key. Um, I mean, that's what I do. I provide information out about the business and that's, this is what we're doing. We're providing information about the business, what we're doing. So, right. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> cool. So, uh, you know, have you, um, have you seen some people that, uh, that just surprise you, I guess. So like, um, so, so for us, right. So I remember, um, so wedding MBA, you, you get a, uh, a spot to basically get on stage and kind of present your product and you get sure. your little 15, 30 minutes. Right. So I remember standing up there, there's like, really big you know so i was a dj so it wasn't that big for me personally you know mm -hmm. so i mean you you had done fairs things like that you know where there was 
500 people. So, sure. you know, the, the hundred people that were attending our little, you know, conference thing, I guess, um, you know, didn't surprise me that much, but the actual realizing that, that I wasn't just announcing, I was having to like give a talk. Yeah. You know? I mean, I remember I even said it, I was like, guys, I, this, I do photo booths. Like, <laughs> like, we, you know, if, if I can be here doing what I'm doing, I mean, there is no excuse for anybody else. Yeah, you know, yeah, I really, sure. you know, to try to not bring, you know, productize their, their knowledge, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, well, I mean, I think the, the thing is, is that, um, you know, people are interested in the story part and, uh, and I'll just say the documentation of the process, right. Of how, you yeah. know, I, you know, like in business, I think for small businesses, particularly that are just getting started or at a certain threshold, I don't think that there is enough of shared experience or information or people helping those people trying to figure out how to get over to that next level. Oh yeah. Um, people hoard, people hoard the success or they, they hoard the process. They hoard the documentation yeah. because they think that's the key to the, their success. And I got to tell you, no, well, I mean, not in my experience. My experience is it's the hustle, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's your motivation, you getting up, you working the process. You know, yeah, that's and finding new ideas, finding and trying new things. Right. And, and, oh yeah, well that's, I mean, I can't tell you, I mean, I probably did 30 or 40 different things before the wedding report clicked and said, yeah, this is a product. This is a business. And then I incorporated it and I haven't looked back since, but that was in 07. Just grabs you by the wrist and just you yeah, know, started I mean, dragging you along. And, right? and even then with the success that it had, it was, it's still this churn of trying to find new things to do and keeping it going. Yeah. yeah. How do you, you know, what do you keep, you know, and, and you try things and they fail. They fail all the time. There are lots of things that I've tried to fail all the time. I mean, you probably know right. this, just building mm -hmm. yep. stuff. It yep. just doesn't work. Yep. But what do you do, man? You just keep trying. That's all you do. You just keep trying. Move on to the next thing. I mean, yeah. you know. I, I'd say the big thing, though, is that it's very easy to get sidetracked and move off of what your core is sometimes. Um, sometimes, you know, we get sidetracked. I mean, me personally, I get sidetracked by the shiny object. So the new shiny object comes along. I have a pretty low tolerance for focus sometimes. And so, oh, new shiny object. Hey, that's cool. Yep. Let me look at that. Um, and then I go and then my mind starts spinning. How do I incorporate that in? What do I make that? And then, you know, um, I, you know, I have to sit down and go back. Okay, wait, does this, is this core to what we do as a business? I'll give you a great example. Yep. Like when I first started, it was, total focus was research and probably a few years in i started getting expanding into like providing leads and selling advertising and that sort of thing and i really felt like it wasn't core to what we were doing and so i basically said okay i'm not going to do that anymore i'm not doing the advertising piece i'm not selling leads i know that i'm probably leaving money on the table but it's not core to what we're doing as a business. I feel like it taints the research part of the business because it's focused, yep. you know, it's focused only towards the, how do I get the advertising dollar? How do I sell the lead? Uh, so back in 08, 09, I basically said I wasn't going to do that anymore. So I haven't, I haven't, haven't looked back on that at all. And uh, it's been a great decision to just focus on the core. There have been other things that have come along that I've thought about integrating in and, and even tried a couple things here and there. And then I always go back to the question is, is this part of our core behavior? Does, is this what we want to be? This is what we do. No, if it's not that core behavior, not core to what we do, then we shouldn't be doing it. We should focus only on the things that are core to what we are doing, which is research. Right. So anyways. My personal no, experience there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the the personal values. I think that's what happens to a lot yeah. of businesses. They um they don't they don't double down on their their niche, their core values is is how I know it, or like their mission statement type deal. Yeah. And then they just they end up trying to do all too much, and then it, you know to, and you're basically uh so we're we're from the south, so uh, they're, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul, which is essentially <laughs> since they're part of the same church, that doesn't just the money just goes from one to the other. You yeah, know, yeah. So that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's, um, yeah, I've seen quite a few different business owners here in the, uh, in, in, in our little local, you know, local group kind of try to do that. 
Yeah. Um, I see I see a lot of inter entertainment companies that they uh, they try to do up lighting, they try to do photo booths, they try to do the sound, this, that, and the other, and it's and it, they send one guy to come do all those things, and it's yeah. just kind of like, man, how, you know, you're so spread out. How can you focus on the one thing and make sure do, that do any well. of it's good? Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's I've seen quite a few people try to, you know, pull that off. And some people, I guess, can do it. I don't know. They chug a bunch of monster or whatever <laughs> they do, you know, and then, you know, then they can make it successful. But yeah. that kind of thing catches up with you eventually. Yeah, so. True. true. That's Jeez, a, thanks a lot, man, for doing this. I really appreciate it. All right, Shane. All right, have no a good one, buddy. You too, bud. Bye. Bye.